it's honestly just about giving yourself a platform to do something creative. Art is everything to me. Well, the beautiful thing about public art is exactly that, for the public. Any Joe Smoke could see it. For me, street art is really about finding art everywhere. I think it's great, you know, because it's accessible to everybody. The public space is ours by definition. Art is too important, expression is too important. I think the public space is a powerful tool, and art in the public space is something that I think we should have more control over. Philadelphia has the most public art than any city in America. So we have a culture of putting art in our public space. Philadelphia men, they, they be crushing it. Whether it's mural arts, street art game, graffiti writers, then there's just some monsters killing it. Kid Hazo. Folks like Kid Hazo. Kid Hazo is a monster. Kid Hazo is one of my favorite street artists of street department history. All I could say is fuck you. He, he sets the bar extremely high. He's super clever and creative, and I, I can't wait to see what he does next. He's super creative. You know, he's, he's, he's a beast, man. You know, the fact he's 115 and he's still doing what he's doing blows my mind. My name is Kid Hazo, and I am one of Philly's satirical street artists. It's silly, it's witty, it's uh, something, you know, lighthearted when a lot of people are laughing. <laughs> that's the best, that's the hit. I remember one time he ticketed the PPA, he created a huge, uh, like, fake ticket. I wanted to just go find a PPA officer illegally parked and give them a giant ticket, right? Because no one likes the PPA. For whatever reason, it took us about five hours to find one. PPA was nowhere to be found on South Street. Uh, but he was persistent in wanting uh, to find an illegally parked PPA car. So we waited, 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 we found one. And then I get out of the car. Conrad was in place to take the picture. He put the ticket on the car. Put it on the windshield. Took a bunch of photos. And then the PPA person came over. He was not very happy about it. But apparently he kept the ticket. And then he followed me on Instagram, so that was cool. He makes jokes about Philly culture, about pop culture. And those are really fun, just moments to have in the public space. Um, so yeah, I'm just a clown that, you know, I don't know why people like this stuff. Like Sean Lugo, he, all his pace are hand drawn and painted. Sean Lugo is another one. My, um, my most admired street artist right now is Sean Lugo. And people think they're just like prints. His little clever tactics. He sits there and he'll sketch it out in his book and then he, he makes a full size uh, paste and paints, hand paints each one. It's called wheat paste because of the material that it's made with. You boil wheat and water and sugar. It creates this glue that you can then take paper uh, and you attach it to a wall. He, uh, he's very productive. It's really cool. When it comes to my artwork, I just address shit that happened to me, mostly. You know, when it comes to a homeless series, I experienced that. I didn't experience it like a lot of people did, but I experienced it. So, for me, everything I do comes from my heart, you know. I'm Hispanic. I was treated a certain way growing up where I grew up. I saw that in some Dominican friends I had. There was people in my family who wouldn't even talk to them. You know what I mean? And they were Spanish too. That's why I put heads on people. The misconception one has for something. If I paint a portrait of you, 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 you know, um, people are gonna take it differently. Their own interpretation. Skin color is a big part of it. One reason why I gravitate to wheat paste more than anything is the main thing I look at is life. At the end of the day, it's, it's, all, it's all temporary. To me, that's the beauty of it. Life is temporary. You know, you're here one second, you're gone the next. That's the beautiful thing about wheat paste. I could create an image, put it up. Someone could come three hours from now and rip it off. Or some knucklehead could come and write their name over it. 
nothing, nothing that I do is permanent unless someone wants it to be permanent. When I create art, you know, I do it for myself. You know, I touch on things I relate to. I can only hope that when I put it in the street, I can inspire young people like the artists who inspired me when I was growing up. I feel like graffiti is always the one thing that people are always hesitant on. You know, it's, it's that old school mentality. You know, they, they see graffiti, you know, right away they think you're gonna write your name. So it's hard for people who do graffiti to get walls and, and property to paint. There's only a couple writers who actually stand out. You know, if you're a successful graffiti writer, you, you got some serious balls, you know, and, um, and skill. Graffiti is, is, uh, is for savages. style of tagging um, nowhere else in the world writes graffiti tags like we do. And the modern day graffiti movement started here in Philadelphia about 10 years, 12 years after the invention of the spray can, right? When Boston and New York were sort of doing better with their economies after the post-industrial era of you know the 1960s, 70s when jobs and factories were sort of leaving Philadelphia, money was leaving Philadelphia. Um, I think we had to be literally creative about how we designed this city and paint on a wall is a pretty inexpensive way to take care of public space. Early on it wasn't as much beautiful pieces, you know, Philly is more known for its tags. I mean, we evolved and a lot of people do beautiful pieces as well, but that's not what we stand out for. So it is amazing how uh, at first graffiti wasn't as popular and it wasn't as accepted and um, you are really looked at as a bad person, a piece of trash or, you know, the scumbag you wrote on this. and. That was coming from people who really didn't understand graffiti writers at all. Now, as, is, as it is accepted, it's, uh, it's shocking to me for people to want it so much. Whether you like it or not, it's there, right? I think street art has its own unique way of connecting people. I have, I have a pretty funny story. Um, so I'm up on the ladder, you know, I'm painting my mural. He was doing a mural on 9th Street, like a graffiti mural. A guy walks by with this girl. I stopped by with a friend, he was like, oh, this is really cool, man. We engage in a conversation. We happen to exchange business cards. He gave me his card, and I'm like, I think we're cousins, dude. <laughs> and we were, so we're second cousins. Oh my God, I was like, wait, we're cousins, man. Art is really a connector. People all the time talk about how they met their best friends doing street art, or they, you know, they met their significant other doing street art. Any place that you see art on the street in Philadelphia, it tends to attract more art and more fans of that art. It can really improve a space and make people feel more connected to the space where they already are. In a place like this, the presence of this mural and the, the lights at night attracts visitors and attracts other artists to come and install work. Before David and the Electric Street came, it was just, well, that alley has drug use and different things going on, we want to brighten it up. And then over time, myself and a couple other neighbors had talked and people in the Civic Association, like, oh, we should really get something going on this. So the theme of this particular mural is STEAM. Uh, it's sponsored by the Malcolm Jenkins Foundation where he teaches kids about science, art, technology, and math. When I think of street art, I think of it being more in the nook and in places with more history. I think it can continue to thrive if new developments just leave places for the community to come in and do their thing. Uh, I think it's growing, to be honest with you. So now the most colorful industrial ruins that you've probably ever seen are now off limits. Known as Graffiti Pier along the Delaware River. As police work to keep people away, we've learned the pier may soon get a new lease on life. Fans of the so-called Graffiti Pier are just hoping it never loses its character. They say that no matter what you think about graffiti, it is art and it's part of our city's history. 
decades of the city not investing in a public infrastructure on the, on the river. It turned into this beautiful space where families go out, people dip their feet into the river, writers go out and street artists go out to paint on those really cool columns. They have to make Graffiti Pier a place where street artists can have a space because currently there's no real space for street artists to legally do street art. The city would do right to sort of honor it by not literally whitewashing that space. It's already a coveted area where people around the world visit. They don't need another sort of regular ass pier. I honestly wish that they would just clean up the trash and keep the art there, but somehow make it more inviting. I'm hoping that they could leave that alone as much as possible. Enhance what's already happening at Graffiti Pier. You know, you shouldn't remove history. That's, that's horrible to do. And what I respect about what's going on at Graffiti Pier is they're actually respecting the culture's opinion on what should and shouldn't go on there. They're trying to keep the aesthetic and the tradition of Graffiti Pier which I think is beautiful. Pay attention to how the community has used it uh, and build around that. Look, advertisers wouldn't spend hundreds of millions, billions of dollars every year, every whatever, if art in the public space didn't have an effect on the way that we think, feel, and behave, right? We have to be able to connect to ourselves and connect to each other and connect to feelings inside of us. and all of that and express it, otherwise I don't know what happens. Uh, maybe what happens is where we're at right now with Trump and stuff, I don't know. Galleries and museums have literal uh, and social walls up that keep people out. It breaks down those walls, literally. Um, it brings art into your walk to school, your walk to work, um, and that's important, that's really valuable. That's what I love about art in public space. That's what I love about what mural arts does. That's what I love about what these street arts do. I think I'd much rather see art and creativity in all of its forms in the public space than advertising.